Pokemon can be pretty damn cute. Just show Ellen a picture of an Eevee and she's a mess for the next 20 minutes. James, call me when this is done. <laughs> but while some just have the power to defeat another Pokemon, some of the cutest and even non-legendary Pokemon have the power to murder everyone on a planet, namely us. So here are some of the cutest Pokemon who are so powerful they could wipe out humanity. It's been nice knowing you all. Well, most of you. Who's that Pokemon? It's Gardevoir! Her legs or a dress? It's I like that dress though. It's skin, I think. Travelling across the land, searching far and wide, can be pretty dangerous. So it's great when you find a Pokemon who's truly got your back. Graceful and totally on fleek, psychic fairy Pokemon Gardevoir is just the ticket, with its sapphire entry stating that this Pokemon will try to protect its trainer even at the risk of its own life. What a heart-tugging entry for such a selfless Pokemon. Definitely with nothing terrifyingly world-ending hidden in there. Unless you read the sentence before, that is. Gardevoir has the psychokinetic power to distort the dimensions and create a small black hole. But while it has the power to create a small black hole, nothing here actually says that it would use it. Just like I have the power to eat a metric ton of flapjacks, but I won't because that would be bad. However, later on in Pokemon Platinum, things got more specific and thus more worrying. To protect its trainer, it will expend all its psychic power to create a small black hole. Ah, okay. Look, Gardevoir, I appreciate the gesture, but don't? For those not in the know, a black hole is, according to NASA, a place in space where gravity pulls so much that even light cannot get out. In the most simple of terms, it's kind of like a hoover with the setting cranked up to suck up everything nearby out of existence. So if one were to be created on the Earth's surface, it would be, well, bad, especially for any Pokemon trainer standing right next to it. So a uh, pretty massive own goal there, Gardevoir. Not to mention crushing the planet into an infinitesimal singularity. And considering the amount of danger trainers constantly put themselves in in their hunt to be the very best, destruction on this scale is inevitable. So yeah, since nothing matters anymore, seeing as we're going to be spaghettified, I'm just going to eat all these flapjacks now. Who's that Pokemon? It's Dugtrio! They're singing. No, Mike, that's not a no mouth, it's a nose. It's the nose. Jonas Brothers. In 1990, five years before the creation of Pokemon, indie rock band The Mock Turtles asked the timeless question, can you dig it? And for most boopable nose-owning ground-type Pokemon Diglett, the answer is yes, with its Ruby Sapphire Pokedex entry stating, Diglett are raised in most farms. The reason is simple, wherever this Pokemon burrows, the soil is left perfectly tilled for planting crops. This soil is made ideal for growing delicious vegetables. Oh, they're helping. And with Diglett being so helpful, you'd think its evolution, Dugtrio, would not only be three times as cute, but also be three times as agriculturally useful. But Dugtrio's answer to Can You Dig It is yes, and with life endangering results. Turns out that three heads are better than one when it comes to getting down into the soil, but probably too good going by its Pokedex entry in red and blue. A team of Diglett triplets. It triggers huge earthquakes by burrowing 60 miles underground. This underground menace can create huge tremors equivalent to tectonic plates colliding under the Earth's surface. Not surprising considering that even at its thickest, the Earth's crust is only just over 43 miles deep. We're no geologists, but we're pretty sure it's not good for the planet's health to drill 60 miles down and start messing around down there. New thought fracking was bad. Back on the surface, meanwhile, the destructive potential of earthquakes is huge. They can even trigger other disasters, creating a devastating domino effect. So if you see these three adorable heads poking out of the ground anywhere, you, and I cannot stress this enough, gotta catch them all. And humanely destroy them, ideally. Way too dangerous to live. Who's that Pokemon? It's Kingdra! It seems slimy. Oh, look mm. at its snoot. There are loads of cute creatures in the ocean, but the most adorable of all is the seahorse. I mean, unless, is SpongeBob real? No, right, seahorses. So it's no wonder that the Pokemon Kingdra is incredibly huggable, despite being a cool dragon type. And its gold Pokedex entry is suitably sweet, saying it is said that it usually hides in underwater caves. It can create whirlpools by yawning. Aww. 
This sleepy seahorse might conjure up imagery of gently swirling waters, but then you read its Pokemon Silver entry and oh, there's the horror! It sleeps deep on the ocean floor to build its energy. It is said to cause tornadoes as it wakes. Wow, and I thought I was cranky before my morning coffee. This water dragon might share its appearance with one of the daintiest creatures in the ocean, but once it's disturbed from its slumber, its powers are truly colossal, causing devastating weather. That's a lot of energy from a creature that is, and we checked, canonically shorter than Mr. Bean. Tornadoes are a regular and scary fixture in certain parts of the world, and can be especially destructive as they move across land and sea for miles. But imagine if all the Kingdra on Earth were to add to that number when they wake up every morning. Do they need to sleep every night? How many Kingdra are there worldwide? It's easy, albeit unpleasant, to imagine how well humanity would handle thousands of tornadoes a day, happening simultaneously. Uh, hello, could I get 300 tonnes of coffee beans? <laughs> don't worry, it's not for me, it's for some Pokemon. Hello? Who's that Pokemon? It's Makago! Oh, look at its big eyes! Is its face melting? They kill you and everyone you care about. They may be slimy, but we think snails are also kind of cute. So we do have a soft spot for fire rock Pokemon Makago, even if it is made of molten rock, which is probably less wise to touch than regular old snail slime, what with magma averaging around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. While we wouldn't want to hug one for fear of a burn, we'd happily have a Makago on our team, what with their huge eyes and the cool fire streaks erupting from their shells. But is that a good idea? Is it even a good idea to have them on the planet? This Pokemon Sapphire Pokedex entry had us wondering as it says, Makago's body temperature is approximately 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For reference, that is hotter than the surface of the f***ing sun. We're not exactly sure what the consequences would be if a creature hotter than the sun was on the Earth's surface, but we asked some scientists and they said, not good. Then they said, how did you get this number? And we panicked and hung up. So what follows is our supposition based on the 2003 scientific treatise, The Core. We reckon after superheating the atmosphere around it and basically cooking every living thing in its vicinity, every Makago would probably burn through the Earth's surface and crust to the magma-filled mantle, which it is hotter than, and perhaps even further to the Earth's core, which it is hotter than. The introduction of so much energy to the planet's core, according to geophysicist Aaron Eckhart, would disrupt the Earth's internal rotation, jeopardizing the Earth's magnetic field, leaving the surface dwellers exposed to deadly cosmic radiation, ending life on Earth as we know it. I take back what I said earlier. Snails aren't cute. Who's that Pokemon? It's Lugia! said Luigi. Hmm, no. would have been better. Yeah. Legendary Pokemon tend to be a bit more awe-inspiring than awe-inspiring. But then there's Lugia, who is, in our humble opinion, both, with its softer appearance and hand-shaped wings spread out for a big hug. It's not trying to hug you. Shut up, we can dream. It's a good thing that most of the legendary Pokemon are so rare, as they are all hugely powerful and capable of destroying the world if they want to. But Lugia is extra special and extra adorable in the fact that it knows its own strength and tries to shelter us from it. With its gold Pokedex entry explaining, it is said that it quietly spends its time deep at the bottom of the sea because its powers are too strong. Oh, it really does care. See, it would hug us. It would hug me. However, it's probably for the best that it doesn't, as its Pokedex entry in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire explains Lugia's powers in more detail. Lugia's wings pack devastating power. A light fluttering of its wings can blow apart regular houses. And as if that's not enough to keep you lying awake at night dreading Lugia, then its almost biblical entry in Pokemon X certainly will be. It sleeps in a deep sea trench. If it flaps its wings, it is said to cause a 40 day storm. Do you enjoy the great taste of crops? Well, not anymore, buddy, as every harvest on Earth fails. This Pokemon goes out of its way to protect us from itself, but you know there are trainers willing to risk huge, disastrous storms in order to put it in a little ball in their pocket and take it to Poke Battles. So the next time you put Lugia in a Pokeball, may we also suggest encasing that Pokeball in concrete and throwing it in the ocean. Who's that Pokemon? It's Lavitar! I bet he's going to regret that eye tattoo. Ground rock type Pokemon Larvitar is what pokezoologists would call a small, angry triangle. Oh, he's so mad. Its Pokedex entry in silver seems fairly normal for a ground type. 
it is born deep underground. It can't emerge until it has entirely consumed the soil around it. Okay, so imagine that angry baby triangle face poking out of some soil. Adorable. However, things get distinctly destructive when it comes to Larvitar's development, as seen when you look at its Pokedex entry in Pokemon Gold. It feeds on soil. After it has eaten a large mountain, it will fall asleep so it can grow. Yep, in a move that puts all our midnight raids of the fridge to shame, Larvitar eats an entire geological formation to grow, presumably into its next evolution, Pupitar, which you would think would be less destructive, being a sort of rocky pupa. And you'd be wrong. Pupitar's entry in gold reads, its shell is as hard as sheet rock, and it is also very strong. Its thrashing can topple a mountain. So yet more mountains are at risk when Pupitar doesn't even have its limbs out yet. And Ruby Sapphire shows that when it emerges as Tyranitar, it's even worse. Tyranitar is so overwhelmingly powerful, it can bring down a whole mountain to make its nest. With Ultra Moon going further and noting, this Pokemon is a mobile disaster, leaving mountains crumbled and houses destroyed in its wake. With all of this, it seems that one adorable little Larvitar can bring down at least three mountains as it goes through its evolutionary forms. And that's not even taking into account any offspring it may have. The cumulative effect of these mountain toppling Pokemon would truly be catastrophic, as the impacts of toppled mountains kick up toxic, sun obscuring rock dust in much the same way as the asteroid that drove the dinosaurs to extinction. Say goodbye to all life on Earth as the sky fills with dust. Also, say goodbye to the ski season. Who's that Pokemon? It's Esper! Oh, look at the ski! There is no way that, that is dangerous, I'm sorry. Oh. Cancel the feature, this is nonsense. Don't know about you, but we here at Outside Extra love cats a lot. Some would say too much, but not us. So when Psychic Kitty Pokemon Esper showed up, we couldn't believe our luck. This fluffy feline looking Pokemon has adorbs folded over ears, and turns out they're like that for good reason, as stated in its Pokedex entry in X. The organ that emits its intense psychic power is sheltered by its ears to keep power from leaking out. So this Pokemon's ears help keep everyone safe! <gasps> oh, wait, that doesn't fit this list. What am I missing? Why? Because it's not destructive enough? No, I mean you're missing the Pokedex entry in Pokemon Y. Oh. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Sure enough, read Esper's entry in Pokemon Y and it's far more troubling. It has enough psychic energy to blast everything within 300 feet of itself, but it has no control over its power. So if you're walking around with one of these little cuties, there's every chance that it could burst with psychic energy. This would make it extremely dangerous to take anywhere near vulnerable infrastructure, such as nuclear power sources, communication hubs, people with pacemakers, or just people in general, lest it accidentally set off the apocalypse. Bring your Pokemon to work day at Strategic Missile Command, Esper goes off, BAM! Back in the Stone Age. So those are some of the Pokemon who seemed cute and adorable. Oh, they all, they all seem really cute and adorable at first, yeah. But then awesome powers destroying the world planet. It's bad. It's, yeah, horrible. Horrible to even contemplate. So, I mean... At least with some of them, it would be instant, like that black hole one, you know, we would barely feel anything, but some of them, the effects of oh, the disasters with months, uh, doesn't bear thinking about. Yeah, here I am thinking about it, and now you're thinking about it. What a terrible video to have made. Luke, Luke, I'm so sorry. Luke, it's okay. uh, yes, can you think of any other, can you think of any other secretly, awesomely powerful, sinister Pokemon? Drop them in the comments if so, and if you enjoyed this video, then do we have some more videos for you to watch? Up here is one from us, it's about Pokemon who got way creepier over time. And down here is one from Outside Xbox, it's about the weirdest things that blocked your path. And if you did enjoy this, then please do subscribe and ring that bell. Thank you.